In this video, you're going to learn how you can chat with multiple PDFs using Llama 2 and Langchain. How can you use Llama 2.0 to chat with multiple PDF files? In this video, we're going to load the Llama 2 model on a single GPU. We're going to use some free embeddings in order to analyze earning reports from Meta, Tesla and Nvidia. We're going to load those multiple PDFs within our project and we're going to use Langchain in order to create a chain that you can ask questions about the PDFs. Let's get started. There is a complete text tutorial that is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers and it is within the prompt engineering section then chat with multiple PDFs right under projects. So here you can find a complete text tutorial along with explanations on Llama 2 and GPTQ2 along with the complete source code and again a visualizations of some of the data and the responses from the chain. So if you want to support my work, please consider subscribing to MLX Pro. Thanks. The documents that we're going to use are earning reports from three different companies, and these are the latest filings. So in our case, we're going to use Tesla. This is uh, again, the latest earnings report. And you can see that the data contains a lot of tables, a lot of text. It is about 40 pages long, and we're going to use this along with our chatbot. Next, we have NVIDIA, and this is again the latest filing. Again, lots of text, table data, etc. And we're going to ask questions about all of this data. And the final one is Meta Earnings Report. Here, the format is pretty similar. We have some tables, we have a lot of text that is formatted, a lot of numbers. So we are going to have a look at how Llama 2 is going to handle these numbers. The model that we're going to use is a quantized version of the Llama 2 13 billion parameter models. And this model actually fits right within a T4 GPU. So this is why I'm going to use this. And uh, this one is provided by the blog and it's essentially a auto GPTQ format of the original Llama 2 model. In our case, we're going to use the 4-bit format with a group size of 32, and the model size is going to be roughly 8 gigabytes. So we're going to fit that into a VRAM. And here you can see that it gives us the highest possible inference quality with maximum VRAM usage, but the speed of the inference is somewhat slower. So uh, in our case, this works fine, but if you want to maybe run some faster inference and then try to, or in uh, the way of the inference quality, then you might try some of the other models. So the, mo the model uses actually this library, AutoGPTQ. And if you're not familiar with that library, it is a great library that can you, you can use to essentially apply the GPTQ algorithm, which is uh, essentially a smart way to quantize a GPT-like models. And this library provides a way to quantize the models and then do inference with already quantized methods. And here you can find some of the benchmarks. It gives you pretty much a better inference speed and less VRAM usage. Of course, there is a hit on the performance, but the hits on the performance are actually quite negligible, at least according to the most of the benchmarks that I've seen. I have a Google Co-op notebook that is already running. And at the start, you can see that I'm using a Tesla T4 GPU. So this is uh, this can be used within the free tier of the uh, WAP machines. And in this co-op, we are starting with zero megabytes of VRAM usage. And this is the maximum that you can take. Uh, of course, we're using CUDA version 12, and this will be important because we want to install the proper version of AutoGPTQ. So first I am starting by installing a lot of dependencies. Uh, here you can see that we are installing Torch, Transformers, Langchain. This is the latest version as of now. ChromaDB, PyPDF, uh, then Xformers. This will probably speed up our inference speed. Then Sentence Transformers and the Instructor Embeddings since we're going to use those within the embeddings that we're going to build. And then I'm using PDF to Image 
uh, for I'm going to show you some of the PDF pages right within here. Next, I'm installing the latest version of AutoGPTQ and I'm installing the version that is for CUDA 1.8.18 or yeah. So this is the CUDA, the CUDA version that is compatible with this Google Quack notebook. So I'm installing also this. And finally, I'm installing the popular YouTube so I can work with PDF to image right here. Okay, so next I'm doing all of the imports that we are going to need. Uh, you can, one of the most more important parts is the AutoGPTQ for causal language modeling. This will load our model. And then we are using PyPDF directory loader since we are going to work with the three different PDFs and I have those right within here. Uh, they were essentially in a folder and you can see that the PDFs are actually right here. Yeah. And those PDFs are available from my Google Drive and I'm downloading it like this right within this directory. And these are the example pages that I'm going to show you. So these are essentially the first pages of each report that we've went through. Then I am loading all of the PDFs with the directory loader. And you can see that we have uh, exactly 100 pages for all of the documents. This is the number of pages. And then I'm loading the instruct embeddings. So these embeddings, if you don't know, are available on the Hugging Face Hub. And this is essentially the massive text embedding benchmark, or this is a leaderboard for all of the embeddings that are free and open source. So here you can see that the instructor watch embeddings are currently at eight place and they are very popular and they perform very well. Of course, there are now much newer embeddings that perform even better. And uh, some of those I might try to run in the next couple of videos and we can compare their performance since the embeddings are really important when we're doing such a retrieval augmentation tasks such as this one that we're going to do today. And yeah, have a look at different uh, embeddings and try to run with some of those and let me know down in the comments if you get much better results compared to what we are going to get here. Okay, so these are the embeddings. Uh, we're going to use the instructor watch model. And if you have, um, let's say, Coop Pro, uh, you might try to use a higher RAM option instance and then you might even go for the instructor xl model and then you might fit this into memory as well but you have to try next i'm splitting the documents into 100 or 1024 chunks uh, per item or characters and then i have some overlap so we have in total 355 documents or texts and then I'm embedding everything using the embedding model uh, within a Chroma database. And you can see that this takes uh, somewhat a lot of time uh, because this model is not uh, really that fast, even though we are putting it on a CUDA device. So yeah, after you have this database, uh, essentially you do this one, so that's all right. Uh, essentially what we do next is to actually download the model and the tokenizer. Uh, I've started with the 32 group size model and I couldn't fit it right within this Google Coop instance. So previously I've told you that we are going to try that, but uh, actually this didn't fit into the VRAM. So I'm using the 128 group size and you can see that I'm using exactly the same repository from the blog, uh, the WAMA 2 13 billion chat with the GPTQ. And then we're using the 4-bit model. And this is essentially very similar to how you would work with a model with the Transformers library. Uh, but this time we are just passing in the correct model and we are using the safe tensors uh, file from the repository. And then this is really important. I don't want to inject a fused attention. Uh, I'm doing this just because this model or the AutoGPTQ library doesn't work when you're passing in a WAMA 2.0 instance right here. And then the device, of course, we're going to run this on a CUDA device. 
Uh, next you see that the model took about 7.3 gigabytes of RAM to download or storage to download and we've loaded it. So yeah, this is pretty much the tokenizer and the model loaded. And after we have both of the models, the instructor watch and then this Llama 2.0 model, uh, you can see that we are actually getting a roughly 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So we need that. Okay, so uh, we are fitting within the VRAM and then I'm going to create, recreate the default system prompt. This is taken originally from the repository for the Llama model and I'm using this function generate prompt uh, which I'm going to pass in the uh, system prompt and in this case this is going to be the default one and then I'm going to use the format that is available for those types of Llama 2.0 models. Uh, you can see the instruct and then the system prompt and then right here I'm passing in the system prompt and then this is the prompt that I'm going to use at the end. So in order to get the responses to stream we're going to use the text streamer uh, these are the responses from the model and I'm going to create a pipeline which is actually a transformers pipeline for text generation passing in the model the tokenizer I want 124 1024 maximum new tokens and I want the temperature to be zero so I can reproduce the results and we have some repetition penalty and top P sampling for the tokens uh, these are pretty much the default settings that I found for the Llama 2 but the temperature is set to zero since I want this to be uh, repeatable and then I'm passing in the streamer okay so we have this pipeline now and I'm going to wrap it within the lang chain hugging face pipeline i'm going to just pass in the text pipeline and then again i'm passing in the temperature equal to zero just in case uh, that this didn't work out as expected uh, maybe this is redundant uh, you have to try that on your own so the first thing that i'm doing is to actually change the system prompt uh, since i want something uh, much more specific to our case and use the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end if you don't know the answer just say that you don't know don't try to make up an answer uh, pretty pretty direct prompt uh, i'm not uh, actually telling it that i want to be an expert on, on earning reports or financial statements etc maybe this might be a better system prompt than what i have uh, since this is pretty generic but um, this is the format I'm passing in the context and then the question itself a pretty standard prompt and then I'm passing in the system prompt as well so for the one chain library I'm going to use the prompt template in which I'm going to pass in this template and then I'm going to say that the input variables or the variables that we're going to pass in are the context and the question so these are the two and Finally, I'm going to get everything together into a retrieval Q&A chain. And uh, in this case, I'm going to pass in the Wama 2 model, which is the auto GPTQ model. I want to stuff everything together. And then I'm going to get a retriever from the database. And here I'm passing in K equal to two. And this is it because currently the auto GPTQ library has a bug that you can't essentially pass in the full prompt length. Uh, you can only pass 2048 tokens and once this bug is complete I'm going to update the tutorial on MLExpert Pro for MLExpert Pro subscribers and I'm going to pass in the complete possible number maybe I will increase this to four and uh, try to to work with that but yeah again this is a current limitation based on the bug that I've already told you about and I want this to return the source document so where the answers is coming from and then I'm passing in the prompt as a keyword argument so this is the prompt that we're going to run with and let's just try this for this demo I'm going to say that I want this to be verbose when I run this chain and this is the first question that I'm going to ask. What is the per share revenue for Meta during 2023? And yeah, here is actually the Meta report. And if you go through the through the report, this number is actually available. 
yeah earnings per share and you can see that the basic for 2023 at least from here for the three months ended at june 30th is uh 303 or the diluted value is 298 so if i run this let's see what we get okay so this is pretty much the answer uh and it actually picked up the diluted value i believe yeah 298 so pretty straightforward and let's have a look at the documents that it took yeah we, it got two documents and then this is pretty much exactly diluted rings per share 2.98 so this might be actually another place where it find it. 2.98. Ah, yeah, here it is. So uh, this table actually has the number that it took it from. Okay, so it found the answer for this one. But if we ask about Tesla, uh, it says that the financial statements doesn't provide such an answer, uh, which I believe is wrong. Because if you go to the Tesla disclosure and you write something per share, yeah, here you have some numbers of basic and diluted values of the shares for. 2023 ending at June 30th. Yeah, so we have essentially the same table, the same numbers, the same information right within the Tesla report, but the model didn't catch it up. So what happened here was actually that the embeddings didn't correctly identify the information. So essentially what we did is to give the model something that didn't provide this information. So in our case, I shouldn't or couldn't say that the WAMA 2 is failing, but then probably our embeddings didn't do a good job. And I'm asking the same thing about the NVIDIA, and it says that uh, during 2023, it was 0.83 cents. And let's see where we get this. Yeah. Net income per share. Uh, we have a table right within the document and here you can see that the basic per share but not the diluted is a 0 0.83 so we have this information for here okay so all of the documents had this information but for the tesla the embeddings did fail us but the model is doing a good job right here um then we have what is the estimated year over year revenue for meta during 2023 it's expected to be so it's is answering that this is expected to be between 32 and 34.5 million uh, which represents an increase of 11 to 16 percent and i believe this is correct from the documents and then for the tesla uh, is doing some strange calculations in which it is calculating the first half of 2023 revenue times two. Not sure why it is doing that. Uh, if you know if there is something about calculating this type of revenues and that includes the first half of a year times two, I'm not really sure. And it is doing some calculations and I believe this is uh, completely wrong. So yeah. I think that it didn't do a good job right here. And then for NVIDIA, again, it didn't give us uh, good information. I'm not sure if the document contained this, but yeah, it didn't work for NVIDIA either. And then I'm asking which company is more profitable during 2023? And it says that it can give us an answer uh, because the essentially the year is not complete and it can pick one but then i'm asking the final question which is choose one company to invest in to maximize your profits for the long run and it starts by the 
let's say the chat GPT way that it is not a financial advisor, etc. Of course, this is not a financial advice uh, video as well. Uh, and it's not, it says that it is not appropriate for me to give financial advice or make recommendations on specific investments. And then uh, it's actually starting with something a bit more concrete or a lot more concrete. Based on the information provided in the context, NVIDIA appears to be a strong company with a diverse range of businesses and a solid track record on innovation and growth. NVIDIA has a long history of developing cutting-edge technology, including GPU architecture, and has successfully expanded into new markets such as artificial intelligence, data science, and autonomous vehicles. The company has also demonstrated co commitment to sustainability, and if it's, this is something that, you're, that is important to you, and social responsibility, which might be attractive to socially conscious investors. Okay, so it thinks that NVIDIA is going to be the best company to invest in the long run. And we'll see if this is the case when the future comes. This is it for this video. We've seen how you can get a open large language model and how you can use some free embedding models in order to analyze and chat with PDF files. In our case, we took Tesla's NVIDIA's and Meta's earning reports or the latest filings for those, and we start asking questions about those PDFs. The PDFs were pretty complex and some of the answers were great, while some of the others were not that good. But yeah, you can experiment and see whether or not this might be working better for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down in the description below. And if you want to support my work, please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro and read the complete text tutorial that is available on there. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.